All right, what's up? We are reading chapter 119 of the Remake webcomic. I have no idea what's going to happen. As I was just saying at the end of the last video, there is so many potential directions that the plot can go right now. Here we have a tweet from one that has been translated from Japanese by Google. Couldn't sleep because of asthma. Complicated by rhinorrhea and sinusitis after sinusitis. So I went to the hospital today and got additional medicines and Chinese medicine or inhaled medicine. It's going to be a long flight. Fight? Fight. Fight. <laughs> Not flight. Nagai, don't remember how to pronounce this. Inai Nari Soda. Yes. I think I can kind of read most of this. Now that I know what it says. I should have tried to read it on my own first. But You know what? No, we don't have time. we got to read comics. <laughs> okay, all right, so we start... Classic scene, Sayatama just one-punching some rando. The, this pose is so iconic. Just the fist out. Not, not punching. Not an action shot by any extent. Just the fist already out and the monster flying away. This, this I think, is the panel of the series. <laughs> Nine warriors of the Dragon Alliance Ragnar. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> What is going on here? Why are they hanging out with, like, knights and, like, dragon alliances and stuff? That's not dragon in terms of strength level dragon. There's no way this person is strength level dragon. <laughs> this, <yeah>. Whoa. <laughs> in the footnotes of history. Why does it have to be in the footnotes? <laughs> uh, just came over for a word after seeing a robbery. More than that, you save the world. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck? What is going on? So, this is an aesthetic we haven't really seen very much of in the entire One Punch Averse Knights. Um, and going alongside Knights, we have talk about dragons and seals and all this other more fantasy stuff that so far really hasn't interfered much with the One Punch Man world. But we did always have a hint that something like this probably did exist at one point because of the name Dragon used for the strongest monsters that have appeared in the series so far. It, it would make a lot of sense that there was this legendary colossal dragon, the cruel dragon, after which all of these most disastrous monsters were, were given that rank and honor. So this is like the OG dragon. For all I know, this is the actual world-ending prophecy, since we we have we haven't figured out what that is yet. <laughs> it's all so sudden. I love the idea of Saitama getting dragged along this like very traditional high fantasy quest of protecting the seals and taking down these warriors without ever once getting into it, without ever once understanding the implications of the lore he's being told, and by punching everybody with one punch. Yeah, look at this. He doesn't care. You think you think Saitama has ever read this much text? No, 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 no. We're gonna read it, because we're nerds. But Saitama, that's no nerd. Ancient soldiers gathers and many sacrifices managed to weaken the cruel dragon. Seal masters separated the essence of the dragon using nine seal stones, sealed them in nine temples scattered across the land. Okay. <laughs> Duty follow the cruel dragon onto our branch known as saints. Who believe themselves to be dragonborn, protecting the resurrected cruel <laughs> trek. <laughs> Let's continue for 800 years. That's actually crazy. The the history of this series, the history of the lore of the world of One Punch Man, doesn't go anywhere near 800 years. Things like the Hero Association happened in response to Saitama. Like almost everything starts not that long before Saitama. Stuff like the existence of the cities and such, of course, imply things that have gone back quite a ways. And then there's some ancient monsters. Oh, I'm like 5,000 years old or whatever. But those are just kind of like random points. So for something to be happening continuously for 800 years is quite unprecedented in this series. It, it's, it really feels like this actually is like a very serious plot line. That this actually has major implications on the lore of the series. And I'd love if this actually was the prophecy. Because it's all being tossed at us so frivolously, and tossed onto Sayatama, so abruptly and frivolously, and, and he doesn't give a crap at all. <laughs> I don't know, I just love that contrast. 
Death bonus wraps up their activities. Take advantage of the frequent monster incidents of the play. Uh, that's pretty cool. It's good, good. Good justification for why this is happening now. Again, not that it really matters, because it certainly doesn't matter to Saitama. Nonetheless, we are ambushed while moving one protected light into another. We appear probably slighted. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Take the seal stones. Lord Cruel Dragon will be resurrected. Humanity will come to an end. Everything you have treasured will be annihilated. It serves you right. Death bone honor together. The only other dragon esque thing is a remake exclusive, which is Orochi. Orochi definitely is like dragon coded. He does all sorts of draconic things. But this actually just adds more credence. Of, it doesn't really need credence, it's just the actual lore, but it foreshadows again the existence of this cruel dragon that when Orochi, or not Orochi, when Psychos was developing um, Orochi from a human into a monster, they emulated this dragon. They emulated the idea of a dragon. <sighs> he dumps water on them. I don't know. Ten years, maybe a hundred. Lord Cruel Dragon has also been quietly waiting for the seals to become weaker. The off chance death bone is wiped out. Those who inherit our will shall appear and realize the resurrection. <laughs> I like that. He dumps the water again, but like doesn't actually ask a question. It's gonna resurrect at some point anyways, why not now? So Saitama's plan is to deliberately resurrect it and then beat it. It's brilliant! In fact, he just did that last arc, and he didn't even know. They had pulled the Master Ninja out from the coma, because time was right or whatever. We never even learned what the Master Ninja was. I still think he's a vampire, because I think that would be kind of a nice connection. Um, but yeah, Saitama didn't care. <laughs> um, I, I think this might be, we'll have like a run of these short arcs where villains that have been prophesized and have been sealed away for hundreds of years or whatever are just mercilessly one-punched. That made me pretty happy. You know, sealing it away forever, wouldn't resurrecting and defeating it completely right now bring more peace of mind for the future? I'll help with both resurrecting and defeating it. So, wait, no, Saitama is about to go on his own high fantasy heroic journey, which is going around beating up the good guys, beating up the, the saints, taking all the sealing stones, resurrecting the dragon himself, and then put... <laughs> so the bad guy is giving him all this information. <laughs> it's all going to happen in this chapter. I swear to God. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. Just point me in the right direction. <laughs> With a little more effort, we can get it done today. Ah! <laughs> uh, this guy kind of looks like a vampire, too. I'm just spotting vampires everywhere. But yeah, he got beat, too. I don't have to resort to violence if you can talk it out. <laughs> Caught them all! <laughs> this is so stupid! And it's, like, hilarious to me because, again, the ambiguity of the power levels. This could actually be, like, a huge deal. This could actually be the strongest entity in the entire series this far. This could be what the world-ending prophecy was referring to. This could be, as I as I kind of suggested, the namesake of the, the monster-ranked dragon. <laughs> and it's all going to happen in one chat. Ah! <laughs> That's so funny. He just sped ran like an entire 12 volume arc in every other series. It had all the setups to become a massive saga that would involve, I don't know, building a whole party and 12 different locations. Nope. Nope. It's here. It's happening. It's, <laughs> it's about to get one punched. Uh... <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, this is so good. This is so good. I didn't quite get tricked this time. I got like a little tricked, but <laughs> as soon as I, as soon as he was like, I'll just resurrect it myself, I saw that it was all gonna happen in one chapter. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> so I'm a powerful demon level. 
You know, I was I won. I wasn't able to leave on time. Ah, oh, poor Genos. Spar with you again in the near future. It'll be convenient with you. Ah, this is something they've been hinting at for a while. That at some point somebody's gonna get Saitama in the lab, and cooperative, and then maybe we might actually find something out. Hmm. Oh, you're gonna make hot pot again. Sashimi at thirty percent off. Nice. you lend me a hand as well? Who could this be? The nose. The pronounced nose on the profile. Nah, there's no way, right? That'd be too crazy. I mean, already this chapter's pretty crazy. They're too strong. Oh, this is Sweet Mask. Ah, of course, this is Sweet Mask. He kind of looks like uh, Tetsuo from Akira, doesn't he? Just a little. Um, okay, so the whole dragon thing it really amounted to absolutely nothing. Sweet mask, like discuss something with you in person. I refuse. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I'm surprised Saitama actually went along, but I guess he thought he would get a free meal. That's important to him. Uh, I don't think he's going to like this, though. Being ordered for? I, I don't think that's in his playbook. I like being ordered for. There's nothing that makes me more excited about a meal than someone taking me out to a restaurant they love and then saying, you're going to love this. You better get this. You know, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Normally, people are right, too. People know what they're doing when they do this. Oh my gosh, so much text again. Saitama will not listen to this. You know, your world is entering a new era of change. A long time ago, Earth had many nations. They fought... Whoa, whoa. This is actually crazy lore. Fought against each other for land and resources through countless world wars. Population decreased until humans began prioritizing the preservation of future generations, unified the languages, and established a world government. That was the first era of change. Okay. So that makes sense with what we know. So far, everything has suggested just one nation, just one government, just this huge collection of cities, all with one letter names, with uh, no municipal governments or anything, just this one government organization, which of course works closely with the Hero Association. Still, the aftermath of the world wars continue to erode the earth, Increased environmental toxicity, rapid climate change, and rise in sea level gave birth to a large number of harmful life forms. So this is when the monsters appear. So this all could actually be the real Earth in the future. Causing humanity to abandon much of the landmass, migrating and reestablishing ourselves in the middle of the supercontinent. Whoa, this is actually so crazy. I I didn't even think this was like, extant. Like, I didn't think this sort of lore even made sense in this series. Like, I, I don't know how to describe what I'm trying to put into words here, but I figured the fact that none of this had been said was because it was never going to be relevant. I'm sure you learned this in great. <laughs> it's a very, very good drawing. <laughs> also dabbled in biology for a number of reasons. Because you're a cyborg. Because you're a cyborg. Humans are also called constant environmental beings, meaning we are a special species that can control, can even control the environment. Isn't that amazing? So it's no wonder that despite our significantly weaker bodies compared to other animals, we managed to survive a very long time. This very long time is interesting, too, because right now the human existence, which is like three million years or so, has nothing on most of the animals that are around. Humans are actually quite a late evolutionary development um, in terms of just the, becoming the species, becoming Homo sapiens. That happened relatively recently. So does that suggest that this takes place in the far, far, far future? Where humans have been around a long time and the Earth has formed into a supercontinent again? But then again, it's not necessarily actually Earth, right? 
God, I don't know. <laughs> this is mind blowing right now. However, present however, we were no longer able to solve our problem just by adjusting the environment and the third era of change is upon us. What do you think that is? <laughs> He's like, he wants his coke. <laughs> The problem is the occurrence of monsters possessing high degrees of intelligence are natural enemies. These occurrences were exceedingly rare a few years ago. But these days, the constant emergency sirens are getting on people's nerves. An odd way to put it, given the fact that you're also saying this is the great existential crisis of humans. But it is interesting. Like, the emergence of monsters happening quite recently, relatively speaking, I think, in the... Hmm, it's hard to say about that, but then intelligent monsters certainly being something quite recent. A few years ago, they were exceedingly rare, but nowadays it seems, yeah, like every other monster Saitama fights, talks to him, has some agenda, is trying to organize something, assuming they can get all of that out before they get one punched. The most difficult part is the majority of the monsters originated from us. Oh... I see where he's going with this. Because, yeah, people like Orochi, a lot of monsters, were humans first. Garo, of course, like a quintessential example of the idea of a human striving to become a monster. In the remake, there's the monster cells. So, yeah, it seems like, especially the intelligent monsters, most of them are human source now. This analogy makes me think that Sweet Mask is going to propose wiping out a ton of humans. <laughs> Ye humanity needs an immune system, and the system is heroes. Strength of... Okay, oh, maybe not, maybe not. Strength of number of heroes. Someone there to lead and encourage. A charismatic absolute hero. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, I didn't expect this. I thought he'd be far too egotistical to do something like this to actually set it up for another person. Ooh, I have decided to turn you into a superhero. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. that word has never really been used in this series. The evocation of a superhero. And to be fair, if you compare the One Punch Man characters to like Superman, Superman, outside of Saitama, shits on like most of them, right? So the idea of a superhero Hmm, hmm, ooh, and Saitama will probably say, no, <laughs> but then again, he does kind of want to be popular. Ah, oh, man, I don't know what's gonna, this is crazy. Again, these plot developments, just. <laughs> Such a sweet face. Such a sweet mask. Let's not wait on doing a good thing. Let's start with getting to know each other. As far as future plans go, let's move to an appropriate place. I've already made reservations. We'll go over your thoughts during lunch. Let me know if you have any food allergies. Ooh. Oh, I didn't hear a thing he said. <laughs> Considering abolishing the S-Class heroes. Really quick, you have just to sign the contract. <laughs> ooh, ooh. In touch with authority on researching hair growth. Saitama should be happy about that. Distribution of effective gear in order to improve the battle prowess in those in D-Class and below. It's kind of interesting. And that, that fits in with, again, a lot of little disparate plot points here and there. Whoa. All right. This is pretty funny. So Saitama legitimately has just no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> he hasn't been listening at all. And think about it. It makes perfect sense. He orders for Saitama. Saitama's obviously pissed. He's so distraught and confused about not getting his coke. And then, the first thing that Sweet Mask leads with is a long history lesson. Is there any way, any way whatsoever that Saitama would still be listening? I think no. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll plunge into chapter 120 next time. See you then.